Hello everyone, I'm Tristan. Welcome to a magic interview. Today I'm hosting a unique artist, a world champion of magic, a Guinness World Record holder, uh, owner of a large magic company, author, and to sum up, one of the most important magicians of our time, Joshua J. Joshua, it's so great to have you here. It's a pleasure. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy. Whenever I'm in Greece, I'm at my peak happiness. So this is my happy place. That's great. Would you like to tell us how did you get started involving with magic and how you decided to pursue a professional path? Well, I didn't ever pursue a professional path. It was like the only thing that I was ever going to do. Um, my dad did a trick for me and didn't tell me how it was done. It was out of this world was the trick in case magicians are watching who are curious. And he didn't tell me how it was done. So I went to my room and I was playing with the deck and dealing and making charts and throwing things against the wall. And I couldn't believe that, that this could be possible. But then I figured out a solution. I figured out how it was done. I went back to my dad and said, look at this. Now you deal two packets. And it worked. And ever since that time, I was totally hooked. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, now, you have studied and you have been close to legendary figures of our field. Which magicians inspired you? Well, that's a good question, a lot. And I think I'm somebody who is less about like looking at one person and sort of going, that's the guy, that's the girl, this is the inspiration. I really like to look at things about each person. So. There are elements of Guy Hollingworth's work that I adore. There are elements of Juan Tamariz's work I adore. There were many elements of Tommy Wonder's work that I just absolutely love and, and fetishize and just I can't get enough of. Um, and, and truly dozens of others. I mean, you could almost list competent and great magicians and I would say you know what I love about that person is this or you know what's so cool is when you see a show by so and so this and that's that's how I look at it then. exactly something that I really admire and respect on you is that you carrying a deep knowledge of classic magic while at the same time you are a fresh and modern magician so how much important is the classical knowledge mm. Well, important, but um, I, don't, I don't love classics because they're classics. It's my belief classic tricks become classics not because they're great, but because they're easy to do. Mm -hmm. If you think about <coughs> classic tricks, what they don't have in common is impact. What they have in common is that they can be sold in a magic shop and that they're easy to do. Linking rings, cups and balls, ball vase, you know, these tricks are not the tricks I would list as the greatest tricks of all time. They're just tricks that are teachable, easy to do, can be passed down generations and cultures. So I'm not really motivated by classic tricks. Mm -hmm. um, when I do classic tricks is because I like the trick. And when I'm doing stuff that feels really fresh and original, it's because I thought I needed to create it. Uh, now, in, in most arts, knowledge comes by the teacher-student relationship, uh, which is a deep relationship that I have experienced many years as a musician and composer. But in the art of magic, we don't easily find such a thing. Right. Why do you think this is happening? Well, I think that the world has changed in a way that magic used to be passed down from master to student to master to student. But now the world digests magic in a completely new way which is mostly better you have some things that are worse but one of the great things now is if you live in a slum in india you have access to incredible magic incredible magic online at your fingertips with things you can find anywhere if you live in the north pole you can find access to the exact same magic you can now find things for free where you never could before. You can find things for a reasonable amount of money that you never could. You used to order out of a catalog, many of the catalogs like those, and you would get your magic six weeks later. 
Now you order, you have your magic in one week. These, yes. these are incredible <clears throat> advances to progress. And it's why we're living in the greatest generation of magicians the world has ever seen. The bad things are that when I first started touring in the late 90s, when I was a late teenager, when I would go to Argentina or Japan or France, I would see magic culture there that was so uniquely French or Argentinian. Magic in Japan looked so wildly different to magic in America. Now when you go to Japan, magic looks a lot like the magic you see in New York and everywhere because it has whitewashed the world, right? There isn't so much culture left in magic because it's, we're all learning from the same people in the same places. And so, you know, in that sense, that's a big reason to come back to your question why we don't have teacher-student relationships in the same way we used to. A big negative that I used to observe in the last tentacles of somebody saying, I'm a student of so-and-so, I work with so-and-so, is that nine times out of ten, the students end up being clones of the teachers. And that's not a good thing. Obviously, yes. You know, I mean, for all the greatness that is Slidini, and he is one of the absolute maestros of magic, he produced many students, but nearly all of them do magic exactly as Slidini does, even from the, the crazy hand gestures that don't make sense unless you're a 70-year-old Italian guy, right? So... I think that what you're we're asking is a complex question. You don't get to choose either or. You just kind of get where we're at. But magic has made great progress. I, I, it's sad that we're losing some of the cultural identity from country to country. But I think it's really exciting that the next great magician can come from anywhere. From anywhere, yes. I had the pleasure to organize on behalf of IBM Athens Ring uh, your lecture, which was hosted at the Greek Academy of Magicians. What was your experience with us? It's great. I mean, I love Greece. It's not just chatter. You can hear me say it to you online. I mean, Greece is perhaps my favorite country in the whole world. I absolutely love Greek food, Greek history, Greek <coughs> culture, Greek weather. Greek people, I mean, it, you guys just don't know the paradise you live in. And so I've been wanting to lecture or perform here for years, and it finally happened, I think, after more than a decade of trying. So I'm grateful to you and Perseus and everybody, Christopher, who helped organize it. And it was a great turnout, lovely group, and really exciting. And your lecture was awesome. And... Um something that your lecture gave me a feeling of a full performance hmm. and i i know that that's your goal if, yeah. I, if i'm yeah. right what are the ingredients of a successful magic lecture hmm. well i can't answer for anybody else i probably can say without exaggeration that i've given more lectures than any other magician let's say in the last 15 years i'm nearly certain of that because every time I travel somewhere for a show I also do a lecture and then twice a year I'll do a lecture tour to see Europe or something so I've done a lot and the quality of lectures is extremely extremely low because magicians mostly are lazy people and they don't give any thought to a lecture except okay this is easy I'll perform the tricks and then I'll teach them so if you give even five percent thought to thinking about it as a whole then you're better than most lectures because you're the only one thinking about it so with my lecture I wanted a circular structure so the first trick I talk about methodologically is also the method of the last trick I start with an opener typically not here tonight I the second half is a little bit like the first half with an opener a middle a closer and I set out three goals that I talk about at the top of the show and then I evaluate myself on stage. And some nights I know I don't connect as much and I say, look, I, I hope you feel passionate, but some of you do and some of you do. And some nights I, it's like electric, you know, and you know you did it. But I try and have that circular structure. And then there's the old thing about like most, I would say 99% of magicians who lecture over explain. Lectures are not for teaching. People think they're for teaching, they're not. You can't teach magic in two hours, five, six, 10, 12 tricks. 
you can only show glimpses. The teaching will come if they decide to take the tricks and work with them. So instead, you have to inspire. That's all a lecture can be. So if I do reverse logic, I'm going to explain that trick in five minutes. The two or three people from this room that will do that trick, they'll have to invest five or six hours. They'll have to email me. There'll be little things that I'll share with them that, it, you know, when I see magicians lecture at the conventions I book, I want to, like, strangle them because <laughs> they waste their time. They get through two tricks because they spend 30 minutes on those tricks because it's self-important. They feel those tricks are so special that they need every detail and that if they go over every little detail, the professionals will love it. But lectures aren't for that. That's what video is for, or private lessons are for little details and stuff. A lecture is a showcase for inspiration, you know? Yes. Now, one hypothetical question I really enjoy to make the magician is this one. If you were, if you were forced somehow from now on to perform a single trick oh, or act man. or uh, a routine from the rest of your life, what would that be and why? Yeah, I'm I really, know it's a tough one. I'm really bad at these. I'm yeah. really bad. <laughs> Because, I'll tell you why. Because if you ask Mac King that question, he would have a great answer to it because he's a clever guy. And also because I just had dinner with him recently and I said, like, how can you do the same show you've been doing for 20 years and then keep doing it for the next 20 years? And he said, because I love the tiny changes in, in each trick and I love just doing those tricks. I'm not like that. As soon as I get a trick, I won't say perfect because we can never achieve perfection. But as soon as you get a trick where it's working very, very well, my focus is on the new dream, the next trick. So built into your question is my hell because I'm not somebody who repeats anything. I could do a much better show and a much better lecture if I did my greatest hits. Out of sight, fool pen and teller, I don't even do it tonight. Hitchcock. Probably the most perfect trick I've ever designed. Didn't even do it tonight. Because it's not interesting to me. I have those tricks locked in. I can do them anytime I want. I'm pushing new new areas, new boundaries. So I can't give you a clever answer because I don't know. Don't worry, don't worry. I don't, I, I don't know clever. what... Because no. I would never want to do this. I'm not that guy. You know, If you see my show this year and you see it four years from now, it won't be the same show. It will be the same show for 99 magicians. But... It's just not me. Joshua, it was so amazing having you here. Uh, wish you all the best from the bottom of my heart. Uh, wish you keep um, offering through your magic and offering through anything you do. Thank you very much. What a pleasure to be here. Thanks for everything. Thank you very much. I uh, hope to enjoy the magic interview with Joshua J. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, click the notification button, and most importantly, Follow Joshua J. You will find all his personal links down in the video description. Wait Have a, a second. I'm level. taking over this interview before we leave. Okay. If you're watching this YouTube channel, you have to do something. In the comments below, I need you to comment to Tristan to put together the magic and music lecture. I've asked him <laughs> as a composer and ma magic needs him to do a proper dissection, a, a very sophisticated adult dissection. I don't want to hear about music from a stupid magician that doesn't know about music. I want to hear about music from somebody who understands and has done scores for plays and movies and things. So I think he needs to do it, a video for it. If he did that, I'm the first one to watch. So put in the comments if you'd like to see it too. So great, Finale. Thank you okay. so much. Bye-bye. Have a great time.